Hello and welcome, I'm Dr. Troy. Vacations don't last forever. Wouldn't it be awesome if they did? But what if they could? Let's find out. Now, I am, I am a, a people watcher and sometimes when I'm away, I see these people and they're just frantic. And you know they're from out of town. And I'm watching them thinking, they have no idea what they're doing. And they don't. They believe that they're trying to have a good time, but ultimately, they're really not. And so you have most people that they tie themselves in knots for 50 weeks out of the year. And then one week here and one week there, they try to untie those knots. And they do a very poor job of enjoying their vacation while they're on it until about the last day or two. And then they just start to unwind enough that they actually can start being civil and looking around and possibly enjoying instead of feeling like they've missed it. And yet, what if you just did that from the beginning? And so if you want to have a life that you don't have to vacate two weeks a year or three or whatever you're allowed in your particular line of work, Instead, if your life is so awesome that you enjoy every aspect of it, you know, it could be, you could actually do that if you really, really wanted. And so what would it take to do that? Well, it would take some elimination. You'll want to start eliminating the badgering in your brain, the self-doubt that you tell yourself all the time, the anger that may be boiling up from who knows where deep within the recesses of your own, bra own brain. You may want to eliminate all of the apathy that may plague you, or the uncertainty that's your constant friend, or the guilt and shame that's just under the surface, you may want to let go of some pride. You may want to let go of some of those hatreds and wrongs that you think have been done to you, the slights. You may want to let those go because it's really difficult to maintain peace and joy and love in the face of all that and enjoy every day as if it were a vacation. But maybe, just maybe, we even want to let go and eliminate the word vacation. I'm not interested in vacating my life anymore. I am interested in going on holiday and having a joyful time all the time. I'm, I'm for being a delight. Maybe I'll just be delightful today. Well, that would be novel. And so as you do this, is it going to happen overnight? Now, for some, it can. It's not unheard of, but most of us probably won't do that. I know when I began realizing that I was my own worst enemy, it took about three years of undoing, though I didn't know what I was doing. And it's so funny. I'll listen to spiritual teachers and I'm like, ah, oh, it took me like six months, a year, four years, five years to figure out what I was doing. Now I could, I could do it in a month or, or quicker. Well, of course. And so that's why we do these podcasts. I would rather you not take three years to do this. I would rather you took days, minutes, seconds, maybe even. But for some of you and many of you, you might want to take weeks or months. But it doesn't have to be that long. You may go as fast as you wish. So what do you have to do? Well, you'll have to become a little aware that your constant thinking is probably crappy. And if it is and you start noticing that, kudos to you. That's wonderful. You might want to help by deciding for love every morning and every evening as you go to sleep and as you wake up. That which you are going to sleep saying and programming of your brain it actually goes much faster. Now the trick is simply remembering. So let's say that you get some 
erasable ink and you write it on your bathroom mirror or wherever you are the last thing you do before you go to bed. Or maybe you have an alarm on your phone, hopefully, and you know you go to bed roughly sometime around 11 o'clock. And so you set that alarm at 10 and it says, make sure you say, I'm going to decide for love as I fall asleep today. And then you set another timer once it goes off because it's important to you. And you keep resetting it until you go to bed. And the moment you lay down, you're repeating already, my decision is for love today. My decision is for love tomorrow. My decision is for love. My decision is for joy. My decision is for happiness. My decision is for peace. Now, you might think, yeah, but my decision's for money because I don't have any. You could say your decision's for money, but it's not money you want. You want what money can buy you. And when I ask you, what do you want with money? And you say something like a car or a Barbie doll or a basketball, or a house, or food, or whatever. I'm going to ask, what will that do for you? So you'll have the car of your dreams. Now what? Why do you want the car of your dreams? Well, because I think it'd be really cool. Why do you think it'd be really cool? Well, it just will be. Do, do you want coolness? Yes. Why? Why do you want coolness? because it would make me happy. Got it. What you want is joy. So why don't you start trusting God a little bit and just start telling him, my decision is for joy. And he'd be like, oh, it's perfect. That's what I have for you. And I know you so well that I know what will bring you the most joy. Now, trust me, that car is coming, but right now we've got to do some things that are going to bring you joy in other ways, in much deeper levels, to prepare for that vehicle coming your way, or that Barbie doll, or that food, or what have you. And so, he may ask you to give up some of the refuse, trash, dirty rags that are around you, like all of that unhappiness that you carry with you, and the anger, and the hurts, and the slights, and the chips on your shoulder, and your negative thinking, all of it. He's going to ask you to give up that which you were never given in the first place. These are not yours. I did not give you them, says God. You seem to adopt them thinking they would be awesome, and you haven't figured out that they're not very awesome. But I'm not going to stop you, and I'm not going to force you to do anything you do not want to do, because that would damage your will, the very will that I have given you, says God. So your will is supreme. All the crap that's happening to you that you don't like, you did, not him. Now, he may have given you the power to choose that kind of crappy stuff, but that's not hardly his fault because he knows you won't be harmed by it anyways, even though you feel harmed. So, are you willing to give up some of the crap that you've put in your life yourself and begin to start looking for something else? I think my decision is going to be for love. You know, the other name for love is God, for he is love, he is peace, he is joy, he is eternal, he is complete, he is without end, he is everywhere, he is everything, and he is literally everything you actually want. So why don't you just start there? I think my decision today is going to be for love. And as you fall asleep tonight, 
My decision is for love. My decision is for love. And if you've done it well, you'll wake up. My decision is for love. Oh yeah, my decision is for love today. Now, you might have to write it on notes, sticky notes, and put it on your dashboard, and on your steering wheel, and on your phone, and on your lunch pail, and on your books, and on your computer screen, and on your chair at work, and on everything so that when something happens to you and you get frustrated immediately because that's your knee-jerk response, that you can read that and say, oh yeah, I'm giving up those knee-jerk responses. I'm giving up the crap in my life. I'm just deciding for love today, all day. If you are that diligent, I can guarantee you in a very short period of time, you're going to have corrected a vast majority of your negative thinking. And you're going to watch the outer part of your life change near miraculously. People around you will scarcely believe what is happening to you. And they'll say things like, you are so lucky. Why do all the good things happen to you? Why does the world work for you and not me? Oh my gosh, again, how lucky could you be? Man, are you blessed? Yes, they will say things like this. And then you get an opportunity to tell them how to change and have it too. And tell them, it's not horribly difficult. It just takes a bit of hard work in the beginning. And you have to really, really want to. I hope that was hugely helpful. I hope your vacations, or rather your holidays, extend forever and ever, and that you realize, maybe I could be on holiday every day, even at work, even at play, even in my relationships, even in this body that sometimes feels like it's not doing so well, and even in this world that seems to think that there's a whole lot of bad crap going on even in that. Until next time, I'm Dr. Troy. Remember, you have nothing to do, only something to see.